You want to know how you can change your life. You want to know why we keep negotiating our dreams. We start out with one belief, one idea, one dream, and then we end up downsizing it or making it different or believing that we want something different just because we didn't seem to be able to get the thing that we wanted. Let me tell you a quick story. This is a real story and how it happened. And I promise you, you'll be able to be able to connect this to your life. So uh, as you know, it was the holiday weekend and I host Thanksgiving every year. And so hang in there with me. I'm gonna give you a good lesson, something that you can really apply to your life. So I got a call from one of my nieces and you know, I host Thanksgiving. So all of the family comes over. We have <clears throat> an amazing time. This year, our, our theme was game day gala. And so we were gonna bring lots of games and play games because we'll have three to four generations of family members there. So all the way from almost 60, all the way down to a three month old baby. So my niece called a few days in advance and she said, Auntie Nell, uh, I wanna ask you something uh, just to make sure that we're okay. I was like, okay. She wanted to know if she could, uh, if it was okay if they do hookah while they're here. Now, for those of y'all who know what hookah is, you know what hookah is, and I'm not here asking your opinion on what you think about hookah. I'm here sharing a story about what happened. So she said, is it okay if we do hookah there? And I said, no, it's not okay. And she said, why not, Auntie Nell? And so this is what I shared with her. I said, we're not going to confuse, confuse what you do with your family with what you do with your friends. What you do with your friends is one thing, but we should not be intermingling the behaviors that we have with our friends as the same behavior that we have with our family. There has to be some boundaries. I said, plus it sets a precedent for, or saying this is what we do as a family. Work with me, I'm not trying to tell you how to run your family. I'm just giving you the perspective that we use in our family. So she was like, well, I don't really understand we uh, drink alcohol, what's the difference? And I was like, you're absolutely correct. So let me explain to you how this started and what the difference is. I promise you this is gonna relate to your life. So I explained to her uh, many years ago when my mom was hosting the dinners, she initially did not allow any alcohol, any anything. And we did that for many years. It was fun, we had an amazing time. And it was okay, you know, like nobody, everybody knew that these are alcohol-free events. And then as we got older and older, she finally said that, you know, we could bring alcohol, but she would not provide it. You needed to bring it yourself. Okay, so, you know, we had a next event, a little alcohol was there, you know, uh, mimosas, margaritas. Uh, at that time, beer was really heavy. So people would bring their six packs of beer or whatever. That was fine. So then cigarette smoking became really heavy. Then they wanted to know, Miss Emma, can we smoke cigarettes in your house? And so she was like, mm, you can smoke cigarettes outside. You can't smoke them inside. So each year it was something different. So it made me realize, which she showed us, that you got to put your foot down. So after that, it was no, no. The answer was no, you cannot. We're doing alcohol. If you smoke a little cigarettes, Go outside on the back porch and smoke your cigarettes, go on about your day. Now, what's the point? So now here we are 20, 30 years later, and we are at the same point. To this day, we still bring alcohol to the event. You still can't smoke inside. But here's the thing. Last year, they wanted to know if they can do vape. The year before that, they wanted to know if they could smoke marijuana. Now this year, they want to know if they can smoke hookah. It was no, no, no. So I pointed out to her, how each year you want to do something different. And then next year we'll be saying it's okay to pop pills. And then next year we'll be saying it's okay to snort cocaine. And then next year, this is how it happens. So I, I shared this story with her. Uh, I said, okay, so let me share this parable with you. And it's so interesting that my friend had just reminded me of this parable. So it's called two degrees. So 
there was a frog. He was looking for a stable place to, to get some sun and to get a little water. So he was jumping to find him a water lily, a water pond. He found some smooth water that he could sit on. He went, he sat on that, in that water and it was soothing. It was cool. It was perfect. And there, he wasn't just in a pond. He just knew he was sitting in water and it was safe. Nothing was bothering him. Well, he was really in a pot. And the owner said, oh, look at the frog. He just jumped in a pot. Think about how this relates to your own life. He said, oh, he just jumped in the pot. So he turned the heat up two degrees. The frog sat there and felt a little bit of a change, but he adjusted. Then the owner turned the heat up another two degrees. Well, the frog is it, safe, it's simple, it's smooth. Two degrees, oh, it just got a little bit warmer. He continued to sit there. Then the, he turned it up two more degrees and he adjusted. He said, oh, I can deal with this. He adjusted. So then he turned it up two more degrees. I want you to think about what happens every time you sit there while something is being turned up by two degrees. And every time that those two degrees add on top of the previous two degrees, think about what boundaries are being broken. Think about what's being allowed. Think about the message that you're sending. So the frog sat there, he turned it up for two more degrees. He sat there, even when he got it up to where it was almost cooking, he, the frog kept adjusting to the temperature simply because it was only turned up in small increments by two degrees. What are the things that you are allowing to happen in your life by two degrees? What are those two degree things that are happening to you? So I explained to her, to my niece that is, I said to her, Things happen sometimes in small increments and we don't even see it happening. I said, so we have alcohol here that started from my mom. And here we are 40 years later, still having alcohol at the event. We've had the, the, the question about cigarettes. You can smoke outside. We've had the question about marijuana. It's a no. Go to your car. Do that. Don't do that in this house. Uh, vape last year. The argument was, it, it's not nicotine. It's, it don't bother nobody. Why we can't do it? And now this year, we're back here with this same conversation of hookah. You see the two degrees? Do you see the two degrees? So there has to be a boundary and precedent has to be set. And so the answer is no. The alcohol is here. We will allow it. You can't get drunk and we're going to help you to not get drunk. You got to go on. We'll cut you off. All that good stuff. But if we continue to allow all of the things that we want to do in society, what are we doing to our family? What are we doing to the precedent that we're setting about what's important and what's not? And what is the difference between being with family and being with friends? She got it. She understood. I said, because next year, whatever the new thing is, you'll be saying, can I bring my lean in a cup? Next, the following year, you'll be saying, we're going to shoot up a little heroin downstairs. The next year, you'll be saying, we got some rolls of, of cocaine. We're just going to snort a little in the bathroom. And that's how the two degrees add up. It's the same way with things in our lives. We knew when the man yelled at us that that was two degrees. And then when he cussed you, that was two more degrees. Then when he pushed you, that was two more degrees. And then when he slapped you, that was two more degrees. But we kept adjusting. When we went into these jobs and you couldn't pay your bills, you adjusted. When they started making you work more, you adjusted. When they told you that what you was doing wasn't good enough, you adjusted. Those are the two degrees. How much does it take until you kill yourself in that pot and cook yourself alive? You got to be willing to set a boundary. You got to be willing to say, this is enough. I'm getting out of this hot water and I'm going to get myself out of what I thought was comfort over to what may even be more discomfort because coming out of that comfortable situation is going to get you into probably more discomfort. So when the frog was sitting in the pot, the reason why he didn't get out, he kept adjusting and it, it became comfortable again. What is the two degrees that you're allowing in your life? And do you even realize it? You're on that job. It's stressing you out. You, you're miserable every day. 
You're doing the same thing over. You're not learning. You're not growing. You're not stretching. You want more, but you keep adjusting to the two degrees. You're going to kill yourself in the pot. You're going to cook yourself alive from the inside out, not from the outside in. And so just like with the situation with my niece, and she totally understood once I explained it to her. And she was like, yeah, you're right, because that's what we do with our friends, right? That's what you do with your friends. That's what you do at the club. That's what you do on your free time. That's not what you do with your family. And there has to be a delineation between family and friends. If not, we're all just the same and we're not. Just like there has to be a delineation between what you will do for yourself and what you will do for other people. It's super important that we understand that life happens in two degrees. Those simple two degree shifts that you can make. If it's anybody looking to make a shift that's going to take you greater than two degrees, because we don't have to do small incremental shifts, people. We can take quantum leaps. Don't be afraid of the quantum leap. I know it sounds scary. That's why you got to have a community around you to support you. You do not have to take incremental change. You can literally take a quantum leap and move on and stop negotiating your dreams. Stop putting it on the back burner. Stop lowering what it is is being said that you can have. Stop minimizing what it is you can be. Stop making yourself small so that other people can feel comfortable around you. If you're looking to take a quantum leap and to stop, the, stop settling for these two degree shifts, you need to book a call to talk to me about the mastermind. I'll walk you through it. I'll answer any question that you have. I'll also give you strategy on how to move your business forward. But I tell you what, we can't keep sitting in a pot that's steady being turned up by two degrees and we keep adjusting. If you want to do something different, if you know that you are highly skilled and talented, if you know that you have a passion for helping and supporting and you want to create change, but you also deserve to make good money and you should not be robbing Peter to pay Paul and you are an adult, you know how to manage your time, you need to set up a call. Set up a call. It's attached to this uh, live and let's talk about it. Let's have a discussion about what that might look like for you, how I might be able to support you and what are the shifts that you can make. And it doesn't just have to be two degrees. Listen here, we can take quantum leaps. The question is, are you willing to bet on yourself and change your life? Because abundance is your birthright and it's waiting for you. Some of us are too scared to even click the button to make a free call that does not cost you a thing. Click the button, set up a call for the mastermind. I would absolutely love to speak with you. I don't do any pressure uh, sales or any of that. Give me a call, let me talk to you. Let me see how I can help you and at least give you some direction on how to move your consulting business forward. And if you find that you think the mastermind is for you, We'll get you set up. Talk to you later.